Is it a dress up Thursday? Do we have to wear shirts? Good morning, folks. Today we're back on the cabin build and we are doing the second half. excited even though it does feel a little bit like Groundhog Day because what we did over here is what we're doing over here but at least we're a bit speedier aren't we Tim oh yeah Well, I'm glad that's over. It's horrible, horrible work under there. Anyway, tight enough now. Let's carry our insulation. When we did the other side, I was really, really over the top worrying about little crinkles and stuff. Don't know why, but I was. Anyway, uh, I haven't done this end actually. Oh, great. It's not ready, is it? I'm uh, gonna get the insulation in. We know it's gonna be dry today, fingers crossed. So what I'm doing is bringing all of the boards down, everything prepped here, the insulation's in there. Should be ready to rock and roll. So uh, let's unload first lot. All right. Get it up on the off oh, Didn't get a mucky bum. I'm trying not to, I thought you were catching So they're six meters, so you just roll roll out full. We'll come back to our bolting later. It's not like it's going to blow away. This is a gritty floor, I doubt it's as cool. Down the middle is the one we need to cut. This one? Yeah. And then, uh, oh, it's like the last 10 mil you need to cut through. And then you need to cut two point, you know, whatever the length is. It's, pr it's almost half. What's this, Tim? So, yeah, twisty, twisty, pulley, pulley. Yank oh, it. Classic boat knot. Just hanging. There's a bit of a lumpy bit there, isn't there? I think it's just where it's not. I don't want to bash it because I think we're... So what we want to do is just make sure everything is on that line. It doesn't matter what's going on below because the batons are going to overshoot them.
We've got a system. We have a system. So we string line for the first course and now we should be ready to go straight down. I keep forgetting a hairband and it's getting a bit ridiculous. I know, safety sallies will be telling you off. Right, we're oh so close to finishing. We need four more. And how many have we got left? Four more. This yeah. could either be, well, it, it's, yeah. I did do all this about six months ago on a sofa in Somerset. And I think so far, so good. <laughs> Luckily, we bought that whole bottle of, uh, box of bottles of glue because we were getting through loads of it. I think the more the better, just because we definitely need it for weather sealing. How yeah. are we feeling? A little bit poop now. Yeah. It's good, we're nearly at the end. Woo! Yay! This, this is a bit of bonus insulation. I now. mean, we've got to be thankful it's at least dry. Yeah, a bit different from last week. Yeah. How close were we, Tim? Don't. It could have all been prevented with foresight. No. We have we have enough material, but the offcuts just fell in the wrong place. So we've got enough to get to here. But we're 600 mil short. We could try and cut scraps and put extra timbers in. But I don't think how many scraps were over 300? Only that one. The others were twenties. Yeah, so we've got two hundreds. So we get to yeah, we should have to pick one up in the morning, but we're just gonna have to try and how could we even get to that? that? Well, hang on. Before we nail this one down, do we want to get some membrane tucked under this one, and we can just cut it off in the morning? We've not got a little shelter we can put up over it. <laughs> Black plastic. But yeah, the thing is, if you put it on here, the water will still run under it. Tape it? Tape it, yeah. Well, yeah. There's a big roll of that good stuff on the tractor. Well, folks, hopefully you can forgive the fact we didn't quite finish. We were oh so close. And maybe by the end of this, we'll have some sort of fancy drone shot of it actually finished. But with, for one board, um, I, w I basically, I think I worked on purely a square metre basis thinking that I'd always be able to use the off cut from one to start the next row. I think if we'd use the off cut from the first chassis to start the second we might have just been okay because all, we cumulatively we've definitely got enough. Anyway that should cover it for the night. Fingers crossed such will we don't get any rain but if we do it shouldn't wick all the way under. We've made sure our membrane is set back enough this time so that rain doesn't creep in. Uh, but what I might do tomorrow is pick up a couple of rolls of DPM. They're normally 20 metres long, I think, by four. Uh, and in which case, we're, we're always going to use 
you know, plastic around here, whether it's for sitting on grass to kill off an area before we seed it or, or make it turn it into a veg garden or whether it's actually as damp proof membrane. I just feel that it would make sense to spend whatever it will be, 50 quid or whatever, to have two rolls that we can just roll out over the top of everything when we're not working on them. And even when we start framing, all of the components, all the kind of panels that we're going to make up will be lying flat to start with. So we can, at the end of each day, we just roll that back over the top. It'll only be that period between getting them stood and getting the roof membrane on that will be the bit in between. But even at that point, everything will be water resistant. It just means that water might pool on the inside of the framework and that's not ideal because you can't really brush it out very easily because there won't be any you know, door thresholds at that point. Anyway, it is what it is. So far, so good. So, we've gone wrong. Oh, we're not sure where. I might find what's up, Tim. What? How is it this side? Are you seriously filming this? Yes, and then you behave. All that insulation I have to rip out. I don't actually understand because it can't go in anywhere. It's literally that like one row of boards we didn't nail in. It just pissed it down all night. It must have. It rained hard, he means, by the way. I don't understand any other way that the water could have got in there. It can't be getting to all these joints. Can't have gone in through the nail holes. As you can see, we've been inspecting over that side. That's in, but we haven't glued down, and we weren't really expecting rain, were we? Well, even with a little bit of rain, those boards locked in would have... Would have Should have. We've dried it on. Okay, yes. Let's dry it, I can tell, because the dust is coming out. Yeah, it, you'd feel it, it'd feel like a water bed, wouldn't it? Okay. What are the chances that the one, I think they're all bone dry. Good, okay, let's so check out the this side. Yeah. yeah, but... Not everything goes to plan though, Tim. Video. We had a bit of an issue, and I've now worked out what the issue was. Well, I had thought, we basically floored out the whole thing with this, which is a weatherproof uh, egg protect board, and then the last course I'd run out of time, so I left them in dry but slotted in. And we came back the next day, or two days after, and there was some pooling in the membrane underneath, which is a nightmare considering we decided to go with a soft insulation. And we thought it was just flowing across, going down through the gaps of the unsealed boards, causing issues. And then it suddenly clicked after we left that day in the rain, uh, that the top of the wool was completely bone dry, which means it didn't come from the top and drip down. It somehow got onto the membrane because it was only the bottom 10 mil of the, the wool that got wet. Turns out what had happened is on both sides, it was coming across the boards and just beading down the outside of our joists, our timbers. Because we'd stapled this, just set in from the edge, I thought, well, the rain can't land on it, but what was happening, of course, is it was going down and getting underneath and then filling it was sitting on top of here, so that's why we kept them reaching in, feeling a bit of a puddle, and the wool was getting wet. I thought it was an absolute write-off. I was having a right there and ripping all the wet stuff out the bottom. It really was just this much of the wool. Um, it wasn't that bad in the end. We put some fresh insulation on top uh, to make up for it, so we haven't really gained, we haven't really lost anything. And then Jo went along, she came back that evening and just ripped out all the staples and tucked it under. And we've been, yeah, we're four or five days on now, we've been watching it. The rain only comes down in a couple of low spots, comes down and it's just dripping straight off. So for now we're leaving it under. We could just run a, out splinter. We could just run a router along here, c create some sort of drip edge, or we might even just run a big piece of um, Gorilla tape, you know, some duct tape on there, which just means the water would run down, drip off the bottom of the tape rather than the wood. So, panic averted, we've learnt a lesson on this one. I'm now going to jack this up just by 10 mil, slide our membrane in. I'll still leave it so it's kind of halfway across the bottom of this timber. It just won't be 
able to be dripped on. But thankfully, these are in fact waterproof. So there's no problem at all with the flooring. The flooring's great. This PU glue has sealed everything up. We will leave it ridged like that until we are very much done. I did in fact, whilst I had a bottle with me, put a few blobs in there. I don't think it's really needed. That might be one of the reasons that Edgar Protects are pushing for people to use glue only. In this situation, I'm not sure it was the answer. Actually, the whole reason why I picked up the camera, I was worried that it would never dry out. This has been sat out. This was an off cut, it was never in there. This has been sat out in the rain for a week now. Absolute, like we've had complete downpours and it hasn't rained in the last 12 hours. And obviously the wind's been getting to it a little bit. This is bone dry, so it does dry out. And it's just a case of w would it have dried out enough with just airflow underneath and the, you know, the water vapor getting way through that breather membrane probably would have, but it would have needed to get warm and then blowy and yeah, it probably would have. But that's it for today. Any questions, stick them down below. Any of the products we use, if I can find them, including things like the glue and the floorboards and everything that we're using, we'll stick them down in the description, but that's it. Thank you for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time.